Today we are going to learn about an important concept concerning sequences, and that is the convergence and divergence. of sequences. So what do we mean by converging and diverging? Well, converging means it approaches, the sequence approaches a certain value. So for example, convergence, let's say that I have the sequence like this, five and then five halves, and then five fourths, and then five eighths, etc. The numbers are getting smaller and smaller, and it is reaching a certain value. The denominator is becoming bigger and bigger and bigger. And if you graph this, so Let's call this part the y part and this part the x part. So x is going to be the, the, the which number of term it is. The first term is 5, the second term is 5 half, third term is 5 fourths, fourth term is this. And let's try and graph this roughly on coordinate plane. Where this is the x part, this is the y part. When 1, 2, 3, 4, five, okay, and let's start with five over here. And it becomes half each time. So at one, it's five. At two, it's half of five. So it's five half, it's going to be like right there. At three, so just to visualize this, this is going to be half, half of the red line here. At three is going to be half of this one, right here, five fourths, and five, oops, five eighths is going to be half of five fourths. So that's going to be half of since uh, at three it was that's that's five fourths. That's going to be five eighths right there. It's five eighths. Okay, and then you can you can kind of see the pattern here. It's becoming closer and closer and notice it's not it's never going to cross it's never going to cross this line onto the other side because it can never be negative right if you keep multiplying by one half it's never going to be negative but it's going to get closer and closer to the x-axis here and the x-axis is when y is zero so the the graph is becoming closer and closer to zero so this is what convergence means. It means it's getting closer and closer to some value. On the other hand though, divergence Okay, let's see we have sequence 2, 4, 8, 16, etc. So that's our y value. Our x value is going to be the first term is that, second term is that, third term is that, fourth term is that. And if you graph this, this is the x part, y part, we have one, two, three, four. The first term is two, say two is right over there, which these I should use the same scale here. So it's 2 is over here. And when it's 2, it's going to be 4. So that's going to be 3, 4, somewhere around here. At 3, it's going to be 8. It's going to be twice, twice this distance. It's going to be all the way up here somewhere. And if you connect the dots here, it's ju it just becomes bigger and bigger each time. It's not approaching a certain value. It's actually approaching infinity. So this is called a diverging or a divergence, a diverging sequence. Okay, so converging sequence means it's approaching some value, such as zero here, and a diverging sequence means it just keeps getting bigger and bigger, or it keeps getting smaller and smaller. 
Um, an, an example of a, a sequence that diverges by becoming really, really small would be if it has a negative So let's see. Or if it has a negative first term, yeah? So 2, then it multiplies by 2, it goes negative 4, negative 8, negative 16. In this case, it's going to be, we'll have to graph like this, actually. So the negative part of y, it's going to go like down this way. So this is also diverging. At first term, it's going to be negative 2. Let me draw a more accurate graph here. I'll use the same numbers that I did on the top. So at 1, it's negative 2, around right here, negative 2. At 2, it's negative 4. At 3, it's negative 8. It's going to be all the way down here, and then it's, it, it just keeps getting smaller and smaller. Okay, so this is another form of diverging sequence. There's also a diverging sequence that's, um, that's alternating. So that this is if we have... A negative common ratio so let's say we have two let's say the common ratio common ratio is negative two so the next term is going to be negative four the next term is going to be positive eight the next term is going to be negative 16 and if you try and graph this the x-axis the y-axis uh, on x is 1. The first term is 2 around here. The second term is a negative 4. It goes down. Negative 4 goes down here. Third term is a positive 8. It goes like all the way up here somewhere. So if you see the, the sequence goes like this. It goes down and then up and it's going to go down again on the next one uh, by a greater distance. And then it goes it goes up again. So this is also a diverging sequence. So let me draw this on a smaller scale. The three kinds of diverging sequence that I've just explained. So one time one type it just goes up, it keeps on getting bigger and bigger. Another type it just keeps on getting smaller and smaller, like this. Another type, it gets big and then small, and then big and then small, and then big and then small, like this. So these are all forms of diverging sequence. Okay, so how do you know by looking at a sequence if the sequence diverges or converges? So for example, let's say I have a sequence 3, 9 fourths. 27, 16. Okay, this is harder to um, picture if it's going to converge or diverge. Um, if you have a sequence like this one, 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, I'm sure you'll just know right away that it's going to diverge because it's getting bigger and bigger without bounds. Um, this one is, however, a little bit harder to um, know intuitively. So the general rule is if the absolute value of the common ratio, okay, the absolute value of the common ratio is less than one, then the sequence converges. Sequence converges. If the absolute value of the common ratio is bigger than 1, the sequence diverges. So that explains why this sequence right here diverges. The common ratio here is, to get the common ratio, you just divide any term by its previous term, or 4 divided by 2. The common ratio is 2, and the absolute value of 2 is bigger than 1. So that's why this series diverges, or this sequence, sorry, not series, sequence diverges. How about our our question up here? What is the common ratio? Well, you just divide a term by its previous term. So 9 fourth divided by 3, which is the same thing as 9 fourth times 1 third, 3 fourth. So the common ratio is 3 fourth. And what's the absolute value of 3 fourth? 
absolute value of 3 fourth is just 3 fourth. And is this bigger than 1 or less than 1? Well, 3 fourth is less than 1, so that means that this sequence converges. So that's how you tell if a sequence converges or diverges. Um, you need to know the common ratio, and if the absolute value of the common ratio is less than 1, then the sequence converges. If it's bigger than 1, then the sequence diverges. Now let's say you know the formula for the nth term. So remember the formula for the nth term was this xr to the power of n minus 1, where a1 is the first term, r is the common ratio, okay, and the n is the nth term that we want to find. So if the formula for the nth term was 3 fifths to the power of n. Do we, do we know, can we tell from this um, whether the sequence converges or diverges? Well, let's put it into this form. Let's put it into this form. So here we have some number times another number that's raised to an n minus 1 power. So let's rewrite this like this, 1 fifth times 3 to the n. Okay, now we have some number times another number to the power of n. Now here we have the power of n minus 1. Um, it's, it's not that important if it's to the power of n or n minus 1 when we want to see if it converges or diverges, but we can always rewrite that as 3 to the n minus 1 times 3, right? Because if you multiply those together, it's going to be 3 to the n. So we can move the 3 out here. So that becomes 3 fifths times 3 to the n minus 1. You can do it like that if you want. It doesn't really matter because we already know whether it's from this formula or from this formula, we know that the common ratio common ratio is 3, right? Because that's the number that's being raised to the power. And actually, from the original equation, you can also say that the common ratio is 3, because the 3, the common ratio is the number that's being raised to the power. Okay, the rest is probably going to be the first term. So the common ratio is 3, so that means that this sequence will diverge, right? Because the absolute value of 3 is bigger than 1. So you can also tell if the sequence diverges or converges by looking at the formula, by looking at the formula of the nth term.